News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali. And a very good evening to you. This is Newsline Live. Now, there was a phrase in 1980 and beyond which said, The lady's not for turning. It was a phrase used by Margaret Thatcher when she addressed the Conservative Party conference in, back in 1980. This phrase uh, referred to Margaret Thatcher's refusal to do a U-turn in terms of her liberalization policies, which even her predecessor, Ted Heath, had urged her to do, mainly because unemployment had risen from 1.5 million to 2 million. Some people say that it is time that this government in Sri Lanka did a U-turn, especially when it comes to the tax breaks that this government did as soon as they came in uh, approximately a year ago. These and other matters are one for a real economist. He's right here with us, Mr. Eran Vikramatna. Very good evening to you, Mr. Vikramatna. Good evening. Is it time the government did a U-turn in terms of the tax breaks? Uh, I, I wouldn't say just in terms of tax breaks, but the government's policy is a huge problem. Uh, and certainly there needs to be a change. Now, this president, he came into office by saying that a system change was needed. Mm. Uh, I looked at it very, very carefully. And I think that actually what he needs is a team change more than a systems change. Right. Because if you looked at uh, President uh, Mahindra Rajapaksa, uh, he gave leadership you know, to uh, a terrorism problem. And uh, at the end of that, he was re-elected president of the country. Then in his second, uh, uh, when he was trying to run for the third time after completing his second term, basically the people in this, this country decided not to vote for him. Yeah. And the reasons were, the main reasons were, that he, uh, the, 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 there was lots of allegations, right, of corruption, right, in the government. And also, I think they pursued the wrong economic policy. And uh, really, he suffered by it, and he got a result which was very adverse, and we had a new president. Now, if you look at uh, the people advising the present president, right, I think they're virtually the same people are in place. So you need a policy change. Yeah. But it's also a policy change sometimes requires a people's change because some people right, think that what they have done in the past actually holds for today. In this case, it does not hold. All the uh, rating agencies have downgraded Sri Lanka. Is it time that the government gets out of denial and admit that the situation is critical and undertake critical action and find a partner who will back them in their quest to traverse these very, very choppy waters be before we get into a situation where we have a sovereign default and so on and so forth. And that partner is only, probably, the IMF. Is that about right? Uh, yes. Uh, as you said it, that all the leading rating agencies in the world, S&P, Fitch, Moody's now, all of them have basically downgraded Sri Lanka. This is the first time, right, since we, our country was being rated, that we have gone to this level of a C. This is the first time that it has happened. Uh, and it is basically you know, we are basically saying that there is a possibility of default. That's what this rating says. Or if I put it another way, the potential to service your debt is in doubt. That's what the ratings actually say. Now, Shaukat, it's amazing that you use the word uh, government living in denial. Because Citibank, right, which is probably the most globalized bank in the world, okay. right, Citibank, it came with a report. And I had the, the fortune, I was fortunate as a bank, I started my career with Citibank before I went on to the National Development Bank. They issued a report yesterday, which was all low in, you know, in the media. And it says, the, the report says, denial is not a strategy. That's what the, the, the report said. Yeah. Right? So you, it's amazing that you use the same words. I think they are living in denial. 
it's a little bit like you know uh, in a family we have a very loved person and suddenly the person falls ill and suddenly the doctors tell us that you know this person has a terminal illness mm -hmm. and, and sometimes it's difficult to come to terms with it and we sometimes live for a while in denial you see and it takes a little time to recognize it to realize it and then take uh, progressive steps right so it's not everybody can't be wrong and just a few economic advisors in this government right we know the president is not an economist or a finance person mm. we know the prime minister is not an economist or a finance person so they're heavily dependent on these two or three people who are these who two are or three actually people? who oh, are these two yeah, or of three course people? the the state the state minister of finance and for sure then the uh, secretary to the treasury right this is an old team that has been placed they were in the last regime as well they are in place and that's their view mm -hmm. right and in social sciences there's more than one view right and our we are clearly saying right that that the policy that they are pursuing is wrong yeah. right and it's going to lead to a disaster the sooner this is recognized right after all it's the interest of the country that matters right is we are not making a criticism for the sake of making a criticism everybody is saying that all the international agencies are saying it. the banks are saying it they are even putting the banking system at risk by what they are doing the government keeps touting the fact that it is paid a billion dollars it's paid a billion dollars uh, in terms in, of in, recent in, in, in october that's yeah. right in terms of recent debt payments but they now, did one, one of the things uh, shaukat that that city bank report did actually say it said sri lanka's issue is not a liquidity issue it's a solvency issue oh. it is a little bit like shaukat you know if you take your home economy you have an income and you have payments to make mortgage payments children's education payments maybe <clears throat> some other payments to make right you can manage from month to month by managing the economy you can go yeah. and borrow from the family you can borrow from a financial institution when the financial institutions you don't repay them they will let you go then you have to take borrowings from people you know and you can manage liquidity for a while but the crunch comes right is the solvency crunch when actually nobody is willing to give you that liquidity then what happens and the city bank report says why we need to be careful is this is not a liquidity issue that they are, we are looking at we are looking at a solvency issue and therefore the government needs to take heed uh, it also mentions that uh, officials continue to mention their willingness to pay but there is no credible strategy for achieving debt sustainability and external repayment capacity beyond the usual talking up growth prospects etc yeah this is you know we have a huge amount of debt we had some time ago about so it's about 6.7 trillion it's about 8 trillion or something billion it's about 8 trillion or something now we paid right about 900 billion right just in interest payments of that about 600 billion were rupee interest payments that rupee interest payments the other interest payments come in foreign currency that interest payments have to be made and now for a while you can get away because for a while what you can do is you can print money in fact in 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 this the the, the latest last month or so about 130 billion <coughs> rupees had been printed from one of the reports i saw mm. i don't have uh, uh, the data directly from the government so i can't vouch for it but i i i saw a uh, uh, a news report right and money printing so there's a limit to money printing there's a limit you can't do it always because sooner or later inflation will catch up right inflation will catch up sooner or later so if you if you can't go you can't go that route eternally and when inflation catches up you have a different kind of a problem and in countries that have had a financial collapse right inflation has been a problem so if you look at the cost of living you go anywhere today right a cost of living people won't talk about anything having come down mm. people generally talk about everything going up right that's what they say everywhere so you have an i'll give you an example you have an import control right this is a luxury item you can regard it as a luxury item right like say vehicles are not brought in today i drove past right uh, the whole kohuvala stretch nuge goda i went through that where all these agencies are there with sales cars they were all were packed packed and i asked a few people around and these cars moving right and they being sold 
And they said, no, they were not being sold because the prices of vehicles have also gone up. Why? Because there's import control and therefore there's no really transactions happening there. Now, that's so a large... Mean pack, the, the, the forecourts were packed the with cars, the not four, with people. No, no, no. The forecourts were packed with cars. There were no people. Actually, there was no people. I couldn't visibly see anybody actually there right. to look at a car. Yeah. Now, I said I, I regarded that as a luxury item. It mm. may not be luxury for working people, yeah. but as, as, that as, as, at, the, at the high end. You take anything else uh, you can think about, and even in terms of foodstuffs, yeah. they have gone in for control prices, control prices on rice sometimes, control prices on sugar, right? You can't even, they had control prices even on things like salmon tins and things. Whenever you have a control price, you can't even get your basics. You can't even buy your basics because of the control price, right? And then, then they do some really bad things, right? Uh, you, you, you must have read this in the media, for example. Irrationally altering taxes. Irrationally. Yeah. I must say this about uh, 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 the former finance minister, Mangala Samaravira. Mm. Right? Um, Mr. Mangala Samaravira had a very clear policy. Right? He was not a financial expert. Yeah. Right? He was not. That was not his background. But he had a lot of wisdom, political wisdom, right? And basically, he followed a fiscal consolidation policy. Right. And it was a long-term policy. He brought in a new Inland Revenue Bill and a new Inland Revenue Act. Right? There are three major agencies in the country which brings 80% of the 75 to 80% of the country's revenue. The Excise Department, right? Then it is the Inland Revenue Department and the Customs Department, mm. right? and basically put structures, policies in place over for a long period of time, right? And what have these people come and done? They have just destroyed it. If we are going to build this country, we should always study what the previous government has done in terms of policies when the new government takes over and there has to be some continuation on basic policy, mm. right? And fiscal consolidation is a basic policy. You know what they are going by? They are thinking that if we grow the economy, we can grow out of our problems. That's what they are thinking. So what is growing the economy means? Growth of GDP, right? The World Bank and the IMF are saying that GDP will be minus 4.6 or 6.7. Yeah. The central bank of the country is saying minus 1.7. But what does the budget speech say? Plus 1.5. So. Forget the World Bank and the IMF, because when you talk about the World Bank and the IMF, in Sinhala you normally make a story saying you are not patriotic. Desha Drohi. If you talk of what the government is saying, they say you are a Desha Premi or you are a patriot. I am asking, forget the World Bank and the IMF. Do I accept the central bank's growth figure or do I accept the finance minister's growth figure in the budget. That's the problem. It's negative growth, so you can't grow out of this problem either. That's why you need to look at this in terms of fiscal consolidation. And uh, on that note, um, we'll go for a short break and we come back, we'll talk more about the critical situation Sri Lanka finds itself in, in terms of its economy. Don't go away, this is Newsline Live. News First, Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali. And welcome back to Newsline Live. And we're in conversation with Mr. Eran Vikmaratna. Mr. Vikmaratna, what is the solution? Forget the politics. Let's talk reality. What's the problem? Yeah. What's the solution? Yeah, so I, I think the, uh, the first thing is a recognition of the problem, that we have a problem, and then we, only we can come to a, what the solution is. So there are two things. One is we have to get into fiscal responsibility. To get into fiscal responsibility, generally it has been difficult because it requires a lot of self-discipline. And therefore, what Sri Lanka has done in the past often is to come into some arrangements with multilaterals, including the IMF, right? And uh, that has mainly helped not so much with the money that they give you, it's basically agreeing on a policy framework. The moment you agree on a policy framework and a fiscal policy framework, right, it, and it's to do with expenditure, it's to do with revenue, right, largely, right, uh, and then immediately what happens is 
confidence is restored in the market. Banks, not just rating agencies, rating agencies, often banks look at rating agencies, but banks and all get confidence because then they know there is a program in place. It can be a short-term program, it can be a medium-term program, and they know that the, the, everybody is committed to working towards that program, and therefore they will they immediately, right, the ratings get more stabilized, right, they are willing to actually give you the liquidity, right, and in this particular case, even the possibility of restructuring some of the debt in this situation that we are in. So that is one side of it. The other side, I think that we have to pay a lot of attention to, and a lot of people are not paying enough attention to this, is the rule of law. Often when we talk about the rule of law, people just connect it only with human rights. Mm -hmm. Of course, human rights are absolutely important. Right? What we have recently seen is extrajudicial killings. Yeah. But we have seen this recently. And this is unacceptable, even in the prisons, because when somebody is taken in, right, basically they are giving up their liberty and their freedom. And therefore the state becomes responsible, basically, for their protection, as well as for providing for them when they are there. And life needs to be safeguarded. The larger issue relating to the economy is, yeah. right, investors look at the rule of law. Because they look at the rule of law is because they are putting their money in a country. If there is a dispute between them and their partners or them and the state, they want to make sure that the judicial system works right in a fair way and the law is upheld. Now, if that confidence is lost, right, then investors will also backtrack. Um, why won't the government tax the wealthy with a higher tax as requested by the IMF? Is that why? Yeah, I, I, I don't think that this thing about, uh, you know, be, be, be being driven by the IMF or anything like that is really the issue. The real issue is, right, that revenues are low. In 2015, when we took over, it was like 11% of GDP. We, we, we increased it to 13%. Yeah. It should be like 18 right. Now it is 9%. So it, it is like this is the way you look at a fair society, is that right you have direct taxes and you have indirect taxes indirect taxes affects everybody whether you're on a 20000 a month income or you're on 200000 a month income the burden is high on the low income person therefore direct taxes must increase rather than indirect taxes to create a more stable environment mm. and when you do that right and you, then you begin to collect the taxes so when it comes to taxes the basic principle is social justice. Those who can afford to pay more should pay more than others. But when it comes to benefits, when it comes to benefits, benefits should be universal. You know, the problem is, right, whether we talk about our former government or you talk about the present government, they often what they do is they call it targeting the poor and providing benefits to the poor. What they are really doing is, lots of the poor don't really get those benefits. What they are really doing is building political systems by using social benefits. We should get rid of that. That's not the way to go forward. Taxation, those who can afford to pay more should be paying more. I was the CEO of a bank and then we have people who are getting much lower pays in the bank. Obviously, I must be taxed a lot more than the person who is doing the security in the bank or maybe driving a vehicle or doing a clerical job. That's fair. Everybody accepts that principle. But when it comes to benefits, I'm suggesting that benefits are universal. Right? So those who are high income might get a benefit, but they are paying for it through their taxation. Right? And therefore, politicians can't mani manipulate the social benefits. Now what happens is, Politicians manipulate the social benefits. And what they do is they then build on that. I'll give you one quick example. Yeah. Samurdi, right? We spend approximately 29 billion rupees on Samurdi per year. Per year. To distribute the Samurdi, we spend almost another 29 billion. To distribute the Samurdi. This is unacceptable because in most countries in the world, for 5% or thereabouts, you will distribute the welfare. It can be a child welfare. There are lots
lots of aging people in our population. It can be a, a, a welfare program for the elderly, yeah. right, or for the disabled, right. We should be actually taking that money and actually putting it in, in the hands of those people. Instead of that, what are we doing? We are building our political network and we are say, giving those people some money, but we are really strengthening our political network and putting the money in the distribution of it. That is why I'm saying right, that that system must end. We must give universal benefits and put the money, but when it comes to taxation, those of us who can afford more should be paying more than those who sometimes come to serve in our own homes and who get a much lesser income. How close are we as a country to finally tail between the legs going to the IMF? I mean, that's a question that I can't really answer because th that depends on this government. My philosophy is, right, it's not a matter of going to the IMF. It's a matter of really following the right policy. That's the issue. We are following the wrong policy now. We are following the wrong policy and we will face disaster. That's what's going to happen. So it's just a, not a, a question of whether it's IMF or it's a World Bank or it's ADB or it's anybody. So if it's not the IMF, if it's not the IMF, yeah. then we are going to be placing ourselves at the mercy of China and India, no matter what. We can't, we can't do it just with them because these countries are giving us loans and they're giving us loans at commercial rates, right? So we need a lot more than that. We, yeah. actually, we actually need, right, fiscal consolidation, we need to raise incomes in the country, we need to uh, cut unnecessary expenditure, and we need to create the rule of law, and we have to create a more, we have to create a better efficient public service, and what we should give universal what services. What is the, That's we, we're what. about to finish, what is the unnecessary expenditure that we, the government should cut off now? Yeah, we, uh, and it, now, you know, the budget is over. I'm telling you, yeah. what will they do next? The next thing they will do is, because the economy will deteriorate in 21 and 22, they will go for provincial council elections, right, as fast as they can. Because the they Prime know. Minister's already asked okay, elections. Because they yeah. know, because they know the economy is going to deteriorate. So what is the next announcements that you're going to hear? The next announcements you're going to hear is, right, that we are giving more government jobs Right, because we had to win an election, right? We are going to do more distribution. Now be honest and tell me, you are a citizen listening to me. You are getting government services. Whether you are getting it from the municipality, whether you are getting it from the electricity board, whether you are getting it from the water board, whether, whether it's some other government service that you are getting. Do you honestly think that by increasing the number of people working there, that you are actually going to get a better service. No, politicians are doing this to stay in power. What we actually need to at do- the, At the cost of the people. At the cost of the people. At the cost Around of the, the people. Mother, it's been terribly important talking to you and listening to you, but unfortunately it's now time for the prime time news from News First, the best channel worth watching, I believe. So therefore, news lines come to an end. Take care, have a great evening and a wonderful weekend as much as you can and as always, God bless you.